All right, and in part two of this uh, cell structure, we're going to be looking at the, the organelles specifically. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with those. Uh, first, we're going to be looking at uh, cell membrane. We've talked about the cell membrane a little bit before when we looked at uh, lipids and macromolecules. Uh, but the cell membrane, this plasma membrane, is kind of like the boundary that keeps the internal processes of the cell separate from what's happening outside the cells, kind of like the skin of the cell. All right, the, the plasma membrane, uh, it helps control what enters and leaves the cell. It's considered semi-permeable because it is made of phospholipids. It has a phospho, um, it has a hydrophilic head, it has a hydrophobic tails, which it means it can allow certain things to move through by keeping other things out. And that's where it gets a semi or selectively permeable uh, name from. Has a lot of different types of proteins that we're about to look at that are embedded within the cell that have different functions. And it also has some carbohydrates, kind of like antennas or receptors, that are embedded there as well. Uh, the specific types of proteins, it's got surface markers, okay, which pretty much lets other cells know what type of cell it is. Say, so, hey, I'm a skin cell, hey, I'm a heart cell. So it has these surface markers, these proteins that are surface markers. It's got proteins that are receptors. Okay, they they bind to things on the outside of the cell, maybe for uh, any type of functionality reason, for um, identification, for uh, uh, to be to be used to to transport inside the cell. So different functionalities. Uh, enzymes are going to be built into it to help with the reaction processes. We've talked about enzymes before, and there's transport proteins, kind of like bridges that connect. Um, the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell together to allow larger particles to move in and out as needed. Here's a nice picture. You can see these receptors, these carbohydrate receptors, kind of like antennas, uh, picking up information and then transferring that information to the inside of the cell. Uh, you've got the different structures, your, your phospholipids, your two bilate, your bilayer, the outside and the inside part. Uh, you've got uh, channel proteins, uh, peripheral proteins, a lot of different uh, functionalities that you can see within the, the membrane. All right, moving inside the cell, we've got something that helps with the structure of the cell, the cytoskeleton. Okay, it helps give support, helps give the cell its shape, it helps keep all of the stuff that's going on inside the cell in place, all these organelles and all the things that are transported. Uh, the cytoskeleton helps with the with the structure of those things. The cytoskeleton uses microtubules, these little hollow tubes made of protein. They're they're very useful in cell division when new cells need to be made. They help in moving chromosomes through spindle fibers and those types of things, and we'll get to the actual functionality of that later, but uh, you're going to find microtubules in, within the cytoskeleton. You'll also find microfilaments when you're talking about animal cells, and once again, these proteins, these microfilament proteins are just going to be uh, used during cell division, but these are going to be a part of the cytoskeleton as well. As far as movement goes for cells, cilia, these little hair-like projections that move in wave-like processes uh, or wave-like patterns are going to be used for motion. Uh, other cells can have uh, these little tails, these little flagella, that are going to also aid in, in motion as well. Okay, getting to uh, some of the bigger organelles now. We have the nucleus, kind of the brain of the cell, if you will. It has three major parts. It has the chromatin, which is where all of the DNA, all the genetic material for the cell is housed. Every cell and every organism that is eukaryotic has a nucleus. Every plant cell, every animal cell, every insect cell. So the cells in our skin, the cells in our um, heart, the cells in our liver, the cells in our lungs, cells in our muscles all have a nucleus and it all contains the same genetic information. Within uh, the nucleus you have this thing called the nucleolus. This is where ribosomes are made. Ribosomes make proteins. And we've talked about all the functions that proteins carry out for the body for any organism, whether it's an animal, plant, a human, we need those proteins. Well, new ribosomes, once old ribosomes are used up, new ribosomes are made in the nucleolus. And then there's kind of like the skin, if you will, of the nucleus called the nuclear envelope. There's little holes in this nuclear envelope called nuclear pores, and the nucleus has to communicate with other parts of the cell. How does it do that? It sends out information uh, through these nuclear pores. All right, uh, another organelle that works with the nucleus is called the endoplasmic reticulum. 
There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There's the rough ER, which has ribosomes embedded in it that that are used for certain things, and it has then another type is called smooth ER. The rough endoplasmic reticulum have these pr have these enzymes embedded within the structure. That's why it's called rough. It looks like it has a rough shape, and these uh, these uh, uh, these ribosomes are there to make proteins, and then those proteins are, are going to be moved um, or transported throughout the cell by the ER. And you can see uh, where the ER is located. The rough ER is, is connected with the nucleus. Um, so once it gets information from the nucleus on what types of proteins through the ribosomes, then it can take those proteins and transport them. So this is the rough ER, the rough endoplasmic reticulum that we're talking about. The smooth ER, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, doesn't have any ribosomes with it. So it, it's not a function, it doesn't transport proteins because it has no uh, ribosomes to make proteins. However, it does have a function, it helps make lipids for the membrane. Remember the membrane is made up of phospholipids. More phospholipids are needed to maintain the structure of the membrane, replace old and worn out parts, and so this is where uh, the new lipids for the membrane will be made. It's also used for detoxifying and storing calcium. Alright, the Golgi apparatus, the Golgi body. If the if the uh, ER is, is for transportation, then the Golgi is going to be the packaging and distribution center to get everything ready. All right? uh, the Golgi kind of looks like some flattened, almost pancake looking flattened sacks of, of membranes and their big purpose is for packaging and distribution. If there's large waste particles that need to be removed from the cell, the Golgi takes care of it. If there's large too large to be moved to pass through proteins, protein channels. If there's large things that need to move in that are too big to cross the protein channels, then the uh, um, the Golgi is going to be involved. So here's where it packages it and gets things ready to uh, be removed from the cell, or maybe even to be brought in for the cell. Okay, in your, in your eukaryotic cell, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you have these things called lysosomes. Uh, lysosomes are kind of like the stomach, in essence. They're di they, they have these digestive enzymes. Remember, enzymes are proteins. They have these digestive enzymes that digest excess, worn out, used up organelles, leftover food particles that aren't used, needed anymore. Um, if viruses or bacteria invade a cell, these lysosomes pretty much eat all this stuff and digest it and break it down to get it ready for um, removal from the cell. Here's just a, a picture uh, under a microscope that shows a lysosome here that's actually starting to engulf and break down a mitochondria that's been used up, old mitochondria, it's not useful anymore. It's going to break it down and digest it and get get ready to ship that waste out of the cell. All right, mitochondria, another organelle. Mitochondria, um, this is kind of like the, the powerhouse of the cell. This is where our energy comes from in the cell. It, uh, it has a membrane, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Uh, it's found in all eukaryotic cells, and this is where energy transformation occurs in the cell. Remember my energy molecule. Energy molecule is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Uh, this inner folded, inner folded membrane of the mitochondria is where all of the ATP uh, is going to be stored within a cell um, and produced within a cell. So where our energy is going to be produced is inside this inner folded membrane of the mitochondria. And here's, once again, here is a, a microscopic picture, and you can see these inner folds of this inner membrane of the mitochondria where our ATP is produced and stored. All 
All right. Now let's kind of get a little more specific. Plant cells versus animal cells. There are some differences. Plant cells have chloroplasts, which contain chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment. It helps with the process of photosynthesis. We'll get to that later. But plant cells have chloroplasts um, for that process. Animal cells don't. Plant cells, because of this chlorophyll and chloroplast, can go through photosynthesis. They have cell walls that, uh, that give their, their structures extra support. And they have these large vacuoles located centrally within the middle of the cell that are going to store water, or maybe food like starch, uh, food reserves, that type of thing. And here's a picture of, of a plant cell. You can notice the cell wall okay, that surrounds the cell membrane. Uh, here would be a chloroplast that has, uh, we're going to get into the details of a chloroplast later, but inside it's going to contain chlorophyll. Here's a mitochondria. Okay, Plant and animal cells both have a mitochondria. Here is a uh, the nucleus. Here's the the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Here's some smooth ER. So those are common throughout all animal and plant cells. Plant cells, though, not animal cells, but plant cells have the chloroplasts. They have this large central vacuole. All right, and then they have this cell wall. Okay, they have this cell wall that surrounds the cell membrane. Those are parts. Um, of the plant cell that you're not going to find in animal cells. Here's just another picture. Uh, chloroplasts, a little bit more information on those. These organelles inside plants cells that can absorb light energy in the chlorophyll and they can convert that light energy through chemical reactions into food. All right, chloroplasts have chlorophyll. I mentioned that already. I mentioned that it helps com it capture sunlight and converts it through chemical processes. This process is called photosynthesis. Uh, cell wall, we mentioned that. Gives the plant cell structure its rigidity, allows it to grow up. Another picture of a chloroplast. We're going to get into this in more detail later. Uh, when we start talking about photosynthesis, but we'll talk about what thylakoids are. We'll talk about the grana. Um, we'll talk about the stroma. We'll get into all the inner workings a little bit later. You can see the chlor the green colored chloroplasts in uh, inside the uh, plant cells, and we'll look at those later. Um, both plant and animal cells have vacuoles, but the plant cell has a large central vacuole where animal cells have smaller vacuoles. Temporary storage, water food supply, that type of thing. All right, then animal cells. No cell wall, no chloroplast, and they have these things called centrioles. So here's a rough picture of, a, of an animal cell, color-coded for us to be able to see the different parts. Still have a nucleus, still have the rough endoplasmic reticulum, still have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, still have the Golgi, um, still have mitochondria, still have lysosomes, uh, but they're going to not have a cell wall. They don't have a big central vacuole. And they have these things called centrioles. What centrioles are, they're pretty much bundled microtubules and they're going to be used during cell division. So they're going to aid in the animal cells process of making more animal cells. And we'll get to how this process works a little bit later. But here's a comparison. Animal cell versus plant cell. Okay. Now the, these parts that are sticking out right here, this is just a cell wall from another cell adjoining or butting up against the cell wall of this plant cell. So the cell wall of this plant cell, here's a cell wall part of that plant cell. And it's giving you a chance to see how, how, they, how they lock up together. So this is the actual plant cell. Okay different parts compared to the animal cell.